so now that we're a good way through the day, today's conference, I think we have a clearer sense of who the digital mom is, what makes her tick, what technologies and gadgets she relies on every day, why she chooses them, and what her priorities are. So the next area to explore is, when does she use technology throughout the day? What does her typical day look like? And what has taken place over the last 50 years or so to turn her into the digital mom of today? And most importantly, how do we as marketers reach her and tap into her tremendous influence and buying power? Here to lead this discussion is Perrin Kaplan, an, award, an industry veteran and award-winning technology marketer and communicator who has a rich understanding of the needs and desires of women as customers. During her long tenure as vice president with Nintendo, she and her team were responsible for launching more than 600 products, including the Wii, which purposefully introduced a whole new market of female players. She now heads her firm Zebra Partners and works with great companies from startups to global brands. Please welcome Perrin Kaplan. I love an absolutely packed room. <laughs> Just kidding. So, good afternoon. Um, speaking for everyone here, it's been a grueling CES. And uh, this is the time of day when your body says it wants a siesta, but we're not going to let that happen. Um, either you'll stay awake because the porn debate's after this, or because you're super eager to hear what we have to say. Um, we're going to give you some uh, perspectives and share some really important data with you that'll help you continue to learn the best way to feed this huge machine that's kind of called, you know, mom power. Um, it's pretty significant. So today's esteemed panel will give you insight into the high value technology plays today in women's lives and also share what's ahead so that you can build or market products that women are going to be obsessed about owning. Because um, I have to say, my technologies that I'm in love with, I'm obsessed and it annoys my husband, but I have to have them. I shouldn't say they, uh, referring to moms, because actually the they is me. I'm a mom. I work full time at a stressful job. I frequently work from home. I'm frequently on the road. I also make the purchase decisions in the home. I manage the schedules. I decide what's in the fridge. I decide which clean clothes people get to wear, um, all clean clothes or no clean clothes. And so for me, the challenge is that gray zone. It's the blend between the personal and the professional that I find to be the most difficult because you're called on one thing from the doctor's office and yet the next thing you need to do is has something to do with work and then school calls and it, it can tend to blend all together. Um, and if not for technology, I have to say that I, I would be absolute toast. Um, at a dinner last night, we were, our hands were slapped because we were, had our iPhones, our heads in our iPhones. Um, so I need technologies that make life easier for me because things that are really fast paced and um, um, that's what's important, at least in my working and then personal world. We're sure that you've been reminded about the size of the market. Um, Rebecca just stated that. So again, two thirds of American moms use five or more forms of technology every day, five, which is amazing. Um, smartphones, netbooks, high tech strollers, you name it, everything's in the mix there. So we're going to hear from the experts um, on how companies are meeting the needs and can meet the needs as we project into the future. So um, bear with me. I just want to really introduce everybody with one quick uh, sweep because we've got a couple folks that have some slides we're going to go through and then one person that's going to sort of uh, speak without slides because it's been a really big day for them. Um, Robin Avni, who's right here is known for her unique approach to linking current insights and trends to past perceptions and historical perspectives. Did you get that? <laughs> uh, she specializes in the analysis, evaluation, and interpretation of key lifestyle categories and trends. She's worked with a variety of Fortune 1000 companies. She's here today to highlight a joint project with Lynn Reed of Hemispheres. Lynn is an expert in what is called go-to-market strategy. Um, development and with a focus on market, marketing strategy optimization and the research end of it. She focuses primarily on the internet and technology industries. Uh, many, many clients in her esteemed career, some of them include Amazon, Yahoo, Sun, and Nokia. Maria Bailey is another very busy person. In fact, she's going to catch a flight out of here as soon as we're done. She is an award-winning author. Many of you um, may have read her books, a radio talk show host and a nationally known speaker. Her company, BSM Media, is a full service marketing and media firm specializing in marketing to moms. Her clients uh, are, are, again, another long list, Disney, Cartoon Network, Nestle, AOL, and many others. She's the co-host of Mom Talk Radio, uh, the first internet radio for moms. 
and uh, the founder and CEO of bluesuitmom.com, which I have to say was an early website that saved me in my, my working days. There was just no other resource to, to speak to the issues that were important to me. Um, and then lastly, but not leastly, you might have um, heard Paul Ottolini's keynote yesterday, providing a glimpse into the future as well as announcing Intel, Intel's next core platform. Uh, Paul talked about the purpose-built devices and the future goal of having technology devices connected, every technology device connected to the internet. So to add even more spice to that, he also announced the Intel App Up Center Beta, which will start offering apps relevant for every single person in this room, from schedule tracking to health monitoring to sports games. There's going to be a lot for people to pick from. Patricia is the director of Intel's service marketing group. Her organization is responsible for marketing the Intel Business Exchange, Intel Software Partner Program in North America, and several other software services. The new App Up Beta Center falls under this area. She's held several amazing roles within Intel, and we're happy to have her here. So let's dig in and get you guys information that's going to be really valuable for you to take with you, and then we can um, jump into some questions. So I think first, first we'll start with Lynn and Robin. Let me I see what I've got here. Mm -hmm. Not those. That's, that's Maria. Okay. So we're going to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Robin and Lynn have a handy handout. Yeah, so we're going to talk to a few slides, but then also one that's on the handout. So, um, so this is from a, a piece of work that we've put together jointly um, from a larger piece of work that Hemispheres um, has done around um, moms and technology and how they're using it and how it's impacting their lives from a social and cultural perspective. So we're going to whip through this. So to start out with, we just want to kind of frame people and how technology has touched their lives. And we, start, we heard a little bit about this in the last group. So if we... Well, and I just add that with the, for the Boomer woman, the princess phone was as exciting as the iPhone was for the millennial woman. That's true. So it's something to keep in mind when you think about how technology impacts your life over the years. So if we kind of consider the, the typical um, 50s mom, she was basically a, a tethered mom. She stayed at home. She had a corded phone. She had to look up everything um, uh, that she needed for information. And most importantly, you know, another way to kind of look at this is how the, the information or entertainment um, changes over time. So this mom really had limited um, entertainment choices in terms of three channels on television and then, you know, radio and then going out to the movies. And if we kind of progress through time, so the next mom. But keep your eye on the kitchen. As yeah, we the go kitchen as well. So this kitchen is very much uh, prepared meal. So now we're at um, kind of the late century mom, the 80s, 90s mom. She's now working um, out of the home, and part of that has been facilitated by the fact that she has um, conveniences that take care of some of the things that were happening in the home, from um, microwaves to prepared foods, um, dishwashers, these sorts of things. But now she has new concerns. She's got children that she's not connected with, so she needs to keep track of them. She also has to manage work, and, um, and now her communications are, are still quite limited, but her entertainment is starting to blossom with you know, cable with 100 channels and things like portable um, media such as uh, Walkmans and um, boom boxes. And then if we go into another 10 years, which is basically a 21st century mom, so that's today, everything's pretty much on demand if you start really thinking about it. So you've got um, a cell phone that walks around with you so you can talk to anybody at any time. You can find out where your kids are, your spouse, your friends. You've got... Um, basically information on demand pretty much anywhere where you happen to be via cell phones or netbooks. And then also um, entertainment's completely on demand. You basically dial up whatever it is you want to see and, and get it at any time. So there's been a huge change in how we consume things and what kind of information we're getting. And also it's affecting our relationships with other people and our family as well. And one of the things that really goes through all of them is that these activities have been happening in the kitchen over the years and how technology has come into the home over the years, particularly for women through the kitchen. So if you think about everything from the phone now to the laptop that sits on your kitchen counter as a key part of how you operate your command central from that command post. So, yeah, and then we just have our little updated J.